Looking back on uh, uh, last week against uh, Michigan, just uh, disappointing in the, in the loss. Thought our uh, game plan going in <clears throat> was to uh, try to attack uh, Shea Patterson, try to put uh, pressure on him and, and force him into uh, situations where he's got to make throws under duress. Um, thought we got to him early, made a couple throws uh, right into a trap corner early in the game. Um, uh, they didn't come back to some of those uh, throws, and they had run so many bubbles and RPOs, and I think we had talked about that earlier in the week. We were able to kind of take them off that game by bringing some some trap corners, and, and uh, <clears throat> he threw it out there, and we kind of uh, hit the kid. Raheem got after him on that one play, and so kind of took that away from him. But just as the game went on, I thought um, – you know, they won uh, the one-on-one -on -one matchups uh, primarily on the outside. And so that's – we knew we had to do that. We knew it was going to come down to if we could win enough of those one-on-one matchups, we would be in good shape, but we didn't do that. Uh, some of them came from uh, just uh, poor fundamentals from our part. I thought we lost leverage a couple of times where we shouldn't have things that we have talked about all week long that we wanted to make sure we did. We just didn't, didn't uh, play with good enough leverage in terms of – uh, we knew they ran outside uh, kind of deep fade routes from their number two receivers, and we got beat on a couple of those, on, particularly on third down, that, that we had no business getting beat on. A couple of the others, I thought, uh, you know, I thought they made some phenomenal plays. Um, I do think they're a very good football team. I think they've got a great receiving core, and uh, their quarterback's playing at a really high level right now, and um, give them a lot of credit. I think they're playing some good football right now. So. That being said, I think we always have to stay on our execution, some things that I think we could have done uh, that certainly would have changed the outcome of the game. Looking forward to, uh, to playing in this bucket game. This will be my second, uh, obviously, that I've played for and, and uh, uh, left a bad taste in my mouth finishing the season last year in the way that we did. Uh, I think we are uh, very much looking forward to this game, the preparation. I think it's very key. You know, we've had so, mo so much momentum uh, this season in terms of what we've done and what we've accomplished. And certainly, you know, the last two games didn't go the way we want to, but I think our guys uh, still have a, a real hunger um, to, to finish this season, whereas a year ago, you know, it's, you, you get bogged down and, and you get beat up. I think we're in a much better place where we are as opposed to where we were a year ago heading into this game. And, and uh, for a lot of people, that's, uh, that's not always the case. You know, you, some, some people come limping to the finish line, and I don't think we're at that point. I think we're in a, in a good position right now. So looking forward to this challenge. I think, uh, you know, over the years, it seems like uh, 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 Jeff Brom and his staff and uh, the Petrinos and kind of that system that they've ran over the years and, and what we've done over the years, we've faced them in a lot of different facets all the way back to – when he was at Louisville and, and uh, my dad was at Southern Miss and so on and so forth, seems like everywhere we've gone or our system has gone, there's uh, their system as well. And so uh, it's kind of a neat challenge and neat matchup um, going against them and seeing how they've evolved over the years and, and what we've done to uh, attack them over the years. I think it uh, certainly just on a personal level, I always enjoy the challenge of a, of a really good coordinator. And I think, I think this staff does a phenomenal job schematically. I think uh, what they've been able to do with their quarterbacks, um, you know, to, to be down the line in terms of the depth chart of their quarterback play, I think they're executing still at a very high level at that position. Uh, really impressed with uh, Aiden O'Connell. Uh, to come in and do the things that they have asked him to do and to to really do it at a pretty high level. I think he's completing 65% of his passes right now. Um, and to come in, you know, whatever few uh, in the midpoint of the season and do that, I think is is uh, a credit to him and, and the offensive staff. Uh, obviously, uh, very, uh, <clears throat> very talented um, outside group, obviously, you know, with – with or without Rondell Moore, uh, you know, certainly I would imagine they would always want to have him on the field. But I think that uh, David Bell has stepped in as, a, as kind of their key focal point, and they get the ball to him every which way. I think he's got 77 catches on the year already. Very dynamic, great ball skills. Uh, for a true freshman, I think he's got really, uh, really talented route runner. And, uh, and then, you know, they've got a number of other guys that are st starting to come on. Uh, you know, Milton Wright is obviously a young guy that's doing some really good things. And then I think Bryson Hopkins is a, is a very good football player, I, similar to, uh, to uh, Pat uh, Vryermuth at, uh, at Penn State. I think, you know, both those guys 
dynamic in the receiving game, uh, do a really good job of finding ways to get open and windows, and they do a nice job, they always have, of, of getting their tight ends involved in their passing game. So it'd be a really good challenge for us. Uh, I think there's some things that we've got to make sure we take advantage of uh, in terms of matchups, and uh, I know our guys are hungry to win this one. I certainly am. Coach, I asked uh, Coach Allen about this. You were here two years ago, but Purdue does a lot of, you know, fakes and, and trick plays yeah. and that kind of stuff, and they faked a punt two years at Wisconsin this past week. They did a, a receiver throw. I know you can't put a lot of time into it, but how much does that factor into your game plan when you watch them? And, you know, obviously this is what this is their kind of their bowl game, so they're probably going to throw everything at you yeah. to try to get the win. I mean, how, you can't over prepare, but how much does it kind of factor in? Well, you know, they've always had that in their system. They've always been, you know, there's certainly a multiple offense and they have multiple answers for what you do and, and they do a nice job of in-game adjusting, but but trick plays have just always been a big piece of their of, of what they do. And, and, you know, I think that's always the creativity of a coordinator and, and the amount of time that you're willing to spend and work at it. And they obviously spend the time that's needed to execute it at a high level. I thought they, they got Wisconsin and really kept them uh, in the game um, well in, into the third quarter. Uh, some of the things that they did early, it threw Wisconsin off balance. And that's, to me, uh, having an answer, making sure that we have a hat for a hat um, and playing hard, you know, I think is sometimes that's the key to playing against trick plays. You know, they're, you know, they're, they're going to dial you up. Sometimes they, they want to see it versus a specific look. Uh, so I think it's important that we continue to change the look up. And certainly um, it, it sometimes can be harder to get uh, big plays like that off if you're a multiple defense where you're creating uh, uh, not just one picture, but you're giving them a lot of different looks and a lot of different pressures from different angles. I think mixing those things up are, are part of that plan. One of, the, one of the best matchups is ironically going to be between a couple of freshmen. I'm assuming Taiwan Mullen will be seeing a lot of David Bell. Yeah. What does he have to do to neutralize the, the, their best asset right now? Well, I mean, I, I'm telling you, I mean, the guy is really impressive. I mean, I think, uh, you know, he's, he's a really good route runner, as I talked about. He's got, he's got um, you know, he can create separation in some of their deeper routes, um, but he does a nice job with some of their underneath stuff as well. It'll be a good challenge for Taiwan. Taiwan's a physical player. Uh, I think he'll want to try to get hands on him. And, and, uh, and then, you know, the thing that Taiwan has is that, you know, you're not going to create separation from him um, and that he's certainly the quick um, you know, he's got, he's got all the short area quickness and, and ability to change direction and stay on him. Um, we've got to force them to throw the ball into some tight windows some and, uh, and make them, uh, uh, you know, convert in, into, into some tight catches, you know. And so I think I'm excited to watch that matchup. I think we got to do some great things of mixing the coverage so we just don't make it a one-on-one -on -one matchup all game long. Um, I think our plan is to continue to try to throw them off a little bit. I think their quarterback's a very good player. I think he's done some really good things. Uh, but he is still young and inexperienced. Um, and so I think any time you face somebody like that, uh, you got to at least test their mettle a little bit, um, both with pressure and coverage. So we'll do a little bit of both those things, not to be too vague. Coach, it's easy to to put the blame on the on the DBs on those on the on the touchdown passes because they're the the last, sort of the last sure. man standing there. But can you talk a little bit about uh, what you were trying to accomplish and did or didn't get away with in regards to getting more pressure on them? Because it seemed like in watch looking back, all five touchdown passes he had plenty of time to throw and time to you know time to get the guy he needed to get to. Yeah, I think you know I, I think a lot of times when we talk about winning one on one matchups. Your point is exactly correct. It's, you know, everybody looks at the one-on-one -on -one matchup between the receiver and the DB, but there's also a number of one-on-one -on -one matchups in pass rush uh, when we are bringing pressure, those types of things. Um, and I think from, from our standpoint, there were a couple things that we didn't do from a leveraging perspective on the outside that, uh, that ultimately was, was our demise on the outside where uh, we just, you know, we either opened the gate too early or we didn't hold the leverage that we needed to to gain the safety support that we needed on the outside. And then, and then you know, we didn't win enough one-on-one -on -one matchups in the pass rush. You know, you can't, you can't sit back and play zone coverage against Shea Patterson all game long. Uh, and if, if you can do that with a four-man rush and get there, then, you know, you can back off and play a little bit more zone coverage. But for us, you know, we didn't like that matchup. I think their offensive line does a good job 
um, we had to force uh, uh, creative ways to getting the ball out of his hand quick or to make him hold on to it long enough. Um, and and it ultimately, I think, from fundamental standpoint and from their execution, I thought they just won more one-on-one -on -one matchups than we did, not just in the passing game, but certainly uh, in pass protection as well. Uh, Coach Allen mentioned you may, we may see more of uh, Reese Taylor. Is that a, because of the confidence he can make some of those one-on-one -on -one plays on the ball? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think I think Reese, you know, Reese has gotten better and better in his one-on-one -on -one coverage. Um, I think he does a great job of getting his hands on people. Um, certainly his confidence, you know, a lot of times it's just the confidence that you carry to step in there and know that you got to win this one-on-one, -on -one, you know. And uh, for us, certainly – you know, we've got a number of guys that we feel like we can trust and that do a good job, but Taiwan has gotten better and better, and I think because of that, we're going to put him in the game more. Uh, are you assuming there's a possibility that Rondell Moore could play or, 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 or any, any planning in that regard? I guess I'm always assuming that Rondell Moore could play. I, I, you know, I just – obviously, he's a very special player. And, uh, you know, you never – you never want to have to face somebody like that, but you also don't want somebody uh, to have to go through injuries. And, and uh, I think that's, the, that's why you come and play in the Big Ten so that you can play the best of the best. So um, if he is out there, um, then we look forward to the matchup. All right, thanks, Kim. All right.